It was the year 2012 on the 4th of February, Sunday night. The New York Knicks were on their back legs and had just stumbled into Madison Square Garden having lost 11 of their previous 14 games. They were pitted against the lowly New Jersey Nets and had to make a win, but things were still not pretty for them. After the first quarter of play, they were behind 30 to 20, and it was becoming increasingly clear that a drastic, desperate move was necessary. Coach Mike D'Antoni, out of options and prepared to do anything, decided to send his third string point guard, an Asian basketballer called Jeremy Lin, who very few people knew about, into the game. Coach D'Antoni had no choice. He had tried everything and nothing was working. This was his only card. However, his only option turned out to be his best option, and that desperate decision became one of the most unbelievable moments in NBA history. Jeremy Lin turned that night on its head and we all witnessed the birth of the Linsanity phenomenon. That night he played 36 minutes, scored 25 points, and issued 7 customized assists that led to a 99-92 victory against the New Jersey Nets. However, 10 years later and at the age of 32, Jeremy Lin is nowhere to be found in the NBA. How did the Linsanity phenomenon phase out of the NBA and where is he now? In this video, we'll be diving into the tumultuous story of Jeremy Lin, his rise to a short-lived superstardom, what led to his fall, and his several attempts at a comeback. While Jeremy Lin might have taken the NBA by storm in 2012, those who are familiar with the 6'3 basketball player can attest to the fact that he had always been a fantastic player. The problem was he had always been overlooked. Anyone can point to several reasons why Lin was overlooked time and again through his career as a basketballer, but no one will ever say it was as a result of a lack of skills or an inflated ego, because Lin was undeniably skilled and a team player, humble and level-headed. His game is running the show. I mean, his strength is being the leader and making the decisions for the team. I mean, that's his number one strength. When he was a child, his parents were instrumental in his journey towards a basketball career. While his father taught him, along with his two brothers, how to play the game, his mother organized a national basketball program in Palo Alto. He was 5'3", uh, 120 pounds, so the question right from the start was, you know, is he going to get big enough and strong enough to play at the high school level? Working with coaches to ensure that his playing did not affect his academics, Lin would eventually become captain of his high school team, destabilizing the prevailing system and ousting the nationally ranked Mater D 51 to 47 for the California Interscholastic Federation Division II state title. It's the best feeling to go out on top. I mean, it's it's it is a dream come true. He was named first team all state and Northern California Division II player of the year and ended his senior year averaging 15.1 points, 7.1 assists, 6.2 rebounds, and 5 steals. This is where things started to become difficult for young Lin. Despite the awards, accolades, and undeniable skill, Lin wasn't getting any scholarship offers from any university. So Lin decided to send his resume and a DVD of highlights of his high school basketball career to all of the Ivy League schools. The University of California, Berkeley, including his dream schools, Stanford University, and the University of California, Los Angeles. However, none of them were interested in offering Lin an athletic scholarship. Only Harvard and Brown guaranteed spots for him on their team, but the problem was that Ivy League schools do not offer athletic scholarships. It was becoming quite clear that there was an issue here. Jeremy Lin would later say that it was a race issue and that it was not hard to see the point he was making. For some prejudiced reason, a young basketballer of Lin's skill was not being actively recruited because it was unusual for a person of Asian descent to be playing basketball, even if that Asian person was as skilled as Jeremy was and had already proven himself on the court in his high school competitively. The hurdles had started assembling themselves, but Jeremy Lin was determined to prove himself and overcome every obstacle on the path toward achieving his goal of competing in the NBA. So he joined Harvard and got his place on their team. In his first year, he wasn't anything spectacular and was the physically weakest player on the team, but by his second year, Lin had matched up an average 12.6 points. By the time he got to his junior year, he was the only NCAA Division I men's basketball player that ranked in the top 10 in his conference after an impressive all-around performance that played him as a consensus selection for the All-Ivy League first team. This was all in his first year. Most notably, he took his team to mercilessly defeat the 17th-ranked Boston College Eagles after they had just defeated the number 1-ranked North Carolina. His senior year saw him get better and better, and among the numerous awards he got for himself and his team, Fran Fraschella of ESPN named him one of the 12 most versatile players in college basketball. Hall of Fame Connecticut coach Jim Calhoun attested to the fact that Lynn could play for any professional team, citing his maturity, skills, and overall composure. 
For anyone with Lin's level of achievement, the NBA would seem like a done deal, but things were only getting tougher for Lin. Even though he had set numerous program records with Harvard, including 21 wins, 11 non-conference wins, and 11 home wins, even though Lin finished his career as the first Ivy League player to record 1,483 points, 487 rebounds, 406 assists, and 225 steals, no one in the NBA would draft him. Were they snubbing him because he attended Harvard? an Ivy League school, or was it because no one was ready to consider an Asian American rookie? We can't say for certain, but what we know is that at the 2010 NBA draft, despite his credentials and apparent skills, Lin was snubbed. However, Lin, in his signature dogged fashion, decided that if they weren't going to notice him, then he would force them to notice him. First, Lin joined the Dallas Mavericks for a mini camp and was invited by Donnie Nelson to play in the NBA Summer League in LA. Again and again, Lin proved himself, averaging 9.8 points, 3.2 rebounds, and 1.8 assists in 18.6 minutes per game, and sent a team that was once flopping to the very top. I talked to Cuban and he said you have a very high basketball IQ. You know, I've been blessed by God to be in this opportunity. Um, I could never have seen this coming. It was after his stint at the Summer League that Lynn began getting offers from teams like the Mavericks, Golden State Warriors, and the Los Angeles Lakers. Soon after, Lin signed a two-year deal with his hometown Warriors, which partially guaranteed him a place for the 2010-11 NBA season. With the signing, Lin became the first American of Chinese or Taiwanese descent to play in the NBA. He was ready to prove himself once again and he had the support of the Asian American community. However, things didn't exactly become easy for the young man. He received very little playing time because there were two other ball-handling guards, Curry and Monta Ellis. Soon enough, he was assigned to the Warriors' D-League affiliate, the Reno Bighorns. There, he got more playtime and soon proved himself again by averaging 18 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 4.4 assists in 20 games. Jeremy Lin would finish his rookie NBA season averaging 2.6 points on 38.9% shooting in 29 games. In the offseason, Lin would get injured and recover from it. Then he played for the Dongguan Leopards in the Chinese Basketball Association where he dominated and was named MVP of the tournament. Lin worked to improve his abilities all around and added some pounds. However, on the first day of training camp, the Warriors waived Lin. Then the Houston Rockets had him, but things were no easier there. And he still struggled and was not given a guaranteed contract and before the season could even start, he was waived once again to clear payroll to sign another player. Next, the New York Knicks claimed Lin off of waivers to be a backup for Tony Douglas and Mike Bibby, which meant once again that he would see only minimal play. He was literally competing for a back door, but this did not deter him and he continued to train and improve. Burdened with the fear of being cut again like his two previous teams, Lin turned to his faith. He was being unfairly stifled in the NBA and he had no one to turn to. It was around this time that Lin's sanity occurred. Called off the bench by Mike Coach D'Antoni as a last-ditch effort to salvage a failing game, Jeremy Lin carried the struggling Knicks team on his back for three weeks and led them to seven straight wins and ten wins in 13 games. Fans on their feet! Five! Four! Lin for the win! Lin would average 22.3 points and 9 assists per game over that baffling stretch and at the peak of it, he scored a career-high 38 points against the Kobe Bryant-led Los Angeles Lakers on national television. Jeremy Lin, are you following that story? I have no idea. I know who he is, but I don't really know what's going on too much. Are you surprised at the production that Lin's had over the past week? I don't even know what he's done. Jeremy Lin tore his meniscus soon after, and that ended the Lin sanity run. After this, things once again started to go downhill for Jeremy Lin. Despite his outstanding performance for the Knicks, they refused to sign him up and retain him even though they needed him. After this, Lin played for seven more NBA seasons with six different franchises. First, he returned to the Houston Rockets in 2013, where he started all 82 games and averaged 13.4 points per game. Then he was moved back to the bench role. After this, he signed for the Lakers in the offseason and shot a career-high 36.9% from three in 2014. After his stint with the Lakers, he played with the Charlotte Hornets twisting and, turning Jeremy Lin. and the Brooklyn Nets in the subsequent seasons. Surgical precision pass by Lin. At the Nets, he was a starter and averaged 14.5 points per game. This was his highest since the season with the Knicks. And when things began to look good for Lin, he got injured again and had to miss 46 games for the Nets in 2016-17. He was still able to finish strong, but by the next year, he ruptured his patella tendon after landing on his knee and had to miss an entire season. By the time he returned to the court, he found himself with the Hawks and then the Raptors as a bench player. His stint with the Raptors was by far his worst run. The Raptors won the NBA Finals against Lin's former team, making him the first East Asian American as well as the first Harvard graduate to play in an NBA Finals. 
After this, Lin was forced to say goodbye to the NBA as his choices got more and more limited and no one seemed keen to retain him. Since his time in the NBA, Lin has signed with Beijing Ducks twice. The first time saw him dominate the CBA for a year before he decided to make a comeback to the NBA in the offseason late December 2020. But that didn't work out. His original team, the Golden State Warriors, the only option for him was to play in the G League with rookies. While this would have been an insult to anyone with Lin's record, achievement, and stature, Lin saw it differently. In his mind, this was another opportunity to prove himself. And prove himself, he did. In the nine games he played, the veteran averaged 19.8 points and 6.4 assists per game, while shooting 50.5% from the field and 42.6% on three-pointers. Still, this was not enough. As much as I want to tell you that Jeremy Lin is finally in the NBA and that he now has a steady career, it's just not the case. On the 11th of June, Lin announced that he was returning to the Beijing Lions, saying he felt he had been abandoned by the NBA. A bittersweet ending to an undeniably skilled player. Or is it? Jeremy Lin is 32 and most would argue is now considered an old athlete. Too old for the NBA? If you ask me, I would disagree. Lin is not the only 30-something-year-old to play in the NBA. Chris Paul, Paul George, Klay Thompson, Russell Westbrook, King James are all names that come to mind when you think of players past 30 who are still in the game. Age is not the only reason Lin is having it difficult in the NBA. The reason has been there from the very beginning. From Harvard straight into the NBA, people have disregarded the undeniable skill of the Asian-American player with team coaches and managers all admitting later that they had made a mistake by not signing or drafting him. However, this does not diminish Lin's achievement as a player in and out of the NBA. His story of doggedness, not giving up even when all the odds were stacked against him, setting a model for young Asian-Americans whose dreams might be to play in the NBA one day. We can only hope that before he retires, he gets one more chance to play in a league that still hasn't learned to appreciate his undeniable talent properly. Comment below to let us know your thoughts and be sure to subscribe for more. And don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss another one of our videos. We'll see you next time, latest Hoops fans. Until then, keep shooting your shot. Man, it's hard. Life is hard. I've given more of myself to God every single year. And every year it gets harder.